Hello and welcome to Working With Miniatures. I'm Jim and today we'll be painting the American Beauty Betty from Masterbox. And right off the bat, Masterbox, why in the name of all that is deemed holy and ineffable is a sprue connected to the hair. This was an incredible pain in the ass to clean up, involving a lot of scraping and cutting, and then some careful carving to add some wavy lines for the curly strands of hair. Maybe I've been spoiled by Games Workshop, Kingdom Death, and Marvel's Crisis Protocol sprues, but this was some poor planning, and in all fairness, I haven't modeled my own miniatures, nor have I ever pressed anything in a mold, but somehow I feel like the sprue connection not being made on the wavy strands of hair, and instead placed on the, I don't know, maybe the already flat neck, might have been a better choice. With that gripe aside, I start with the base, adding a little water to a dish along with AK Interactive's concrete terrain paste. I like to stick the paste on the side so it doesn't absorb all the moisture right away. A little water goes a long way with making the stuff easier to spread. And here you can see the painstaking effort I put into not getting this terrain on the miniature that I already glued on an oval base. As the paste dries, I mix Milliput and add a little isopropyl alcohol and push this into all of the gaps that remained after assembly. If you find the Milliput sticking to you, you can dip your fingertips into just a little of the alcohol. My father served 22 years in the United States Army, so I wanted to do something Army related. I settled on the U.S. Army Military Service Mark, specifically the solid green one that I had seen on the internet. The idea I had in my head was she was in a celebratory parade on a military base over concrete, and on the concrete was painted this emblem. The next day I pick up this work in progress and, remember the painstaking work of carefully spreading the terrain paste around her feet? It was all for nothing because the first thing I do is snatch her off. To start this, I used a stencil held in place and sketched the outer part of the circle before repeating the same to create the inner part. I then filled in the rest, not really worrying about making it perfect since some of it would have worn off in the traffic of marching soldiers and a few M606s. Once the circle was done, I freehand in the eagle, shield, and other parts. I end up being a little off-center, but considering this is one of the few free-handed paintings I've ever done, I'm happy enough with it, except for the clutch of arrows in the left talon. That definitely doesn't look like arrows. I then freehand in the text. Space of the letters could have definitely been better, and the army text at the bottom was pretty far off center. I was on a time crunch trying to get this out for the 4th of July, which of course I failed at, but I decided to ride with what I had. I reattach her to the base and black out the rim, and then slap some gloss varnish all over her and wait for it to dry. The gloss varnish helps fill in some of the small holes or gaps that the milliput did not cover and I freely spread this everywhere except places where it may cause loss of fine details, such as the fingers, hair, and face. I then primed the miniature with a brush using gloss black for no other real reason than I still have a ton of glossy primer that I almost never use. Once everything is dry, I start on the flesh. I didn't really have a plan for this, to be honest, and I just watched one of Roman Lapot's recent videos, and one of the things that he said stuck with me was roughly along the lines of, I'm just blocking in the colors. So I figured, let me try that to start. Let's block in some colors and adjust it later. I chose magenta to start with because I wanted a Caucasian skin tone in the end, and magenta would give some warmth and life. I then slap some primary red on the inner thighs and under the knees, under the calves and underarms. This was probably a little overkill, but I wanted to see how this would look and just kept rolling with it, keeping this color mostly to where there would be the darkest shadows. I then started adding raw sienna, with the expectation that this would likely be my mid-tone. This took multiple light coats. The bottle says it's opaque, but most of the Liquitex acrylic gauche colors are pretty transparent overall. I add peach as a highlight, which was also built up over several coats. Around the end of this step, I decided that if I had to do this again from scratch, I would try magenta as shadows and warmth color, and then mix a raw sienna and peach as my base for the flesh, and then I'd build up lighter from there. Okay. 
Coming back with raw thin sienna, I glaze this between the magenta and red and the highlight to help smooth the transition some, before mixing peach and raw sienna to glaze as a brighter highlight. I go back and forth with some of these colors, glazing darker shadows and then mid-tones and then brighter highlights and all over again, until it starts to look smoother. And then I did something that did not work well at all. I thought I'd try some thin flesh tone speed paint and use this as an overall wash to help bring everything together. And to a degree it did, but it also made her very jaundiced looking. It also caused other problems that I'll show at the end of this video. To get away from this very yellowish Lego Man-esque skin tone, I add yet another highlight. Deciding to take a break from the flesh for a while, I start on the red elements of the clothing, specifically the shoes, the trim of her top and the stripes on her hot pants, and then the blue of her top and half of her shorts. In both cases, these colors had to be built up over multiple layers as they are very transparent, especially the primary red. The blue was highlighted brighter and brighter with basic layering, covering less area with each color. The red was done in a reverse approach, adding darker and darker shadows under the arms, sides of the waist, and bottom parts of the shoes specifically. Once these elements were finished, it made the rest of the model look much better and not so much as a hot mess. I decided to go ahead and finish the clothing so so little else remained, and built up the white stripes and painted in the stars. I only added in one shadow for the white, using unbleached titanium, and I had to be careful with this as it has a little yellow in it and too much of it makes it look like stains as opposed to a shadow. Due to me fully assembling the model before painting it, it would be impossible to paint stars on her outer hip, so instead of columns like on the flag, I decided to do a circle of stars with one in the middle. The stars themselves came out better than I thought they would, considering my freehanding symbols and letters are widely untested and untrained. I need to really get back to painting more fantasy models, things with a lot of heraldry and big shields and cloaks, so I can get more freehand practice in. For the hair, I followed a similar approach as I did with the blue clothing, starting with a darker color and then building up several layers of highlights, save for an additional glaze of very thin yellow at the end to make it a little more golden blonde. Gritting my teeth, I return to the flesh, still not happy with this tone, specifically how she looks so old due to the discoloration of her skin. To help remediate this, I mix some peach with unbleached titanium, which is an off-white, and then I add a lot of glaze medium. 
This did a lot to brighten the skin up and dull some of that discoloration, which was looking like a lot of age spotting. Actually, I have a miniature that is an old woman that I still need to paint, and I re may revisit this flesh recipe on her. Sans the final glazes that I'm doing now. So for the flag, and this is the main reason why I didn't get this miniature out as scheduled, let's start with that this miniature did not come with a flagpole. It does come with a little plastic sticker crap thing flag that I guess I could have stuck on the top of a Q-tip, but the flag would have been flat and the look of it would have been something that you would expect to see on an hors d'oeuvre. Instead, I tried 3D printing several flags, but they all had multiple issues, such as they were just bad STL files with a lot of negative spots, or the flag itself was so thin that it wouldn't actually print. After several days of failures and trials and multiple errors, I finally found this one that I was able to print, and I did so in three varying sizes, all without issues. The reason I printed three of them at different sizes was because I really wasn't sure how wide the pole would be in relation to her hand, and the flag had to be high enough to clear her hand. In the end, the smallest of the random ones I printed was as perfect as I could get, though the pole was still slightly too wide for her grip. Oh, wait, that didn't sound right. <clears throat> anyway, I primed the flag and pole and painted the flag the same colors that I had on my palette that I used for the clothing. And this flag, by the way, I thought was going to be a quick task, and it was assuredly not that. I decided the base coat, the entire flag with red, because red was the most transparent of the colors that would be on it, and it's best to get a solid red coat from the start, and then layer the more opaque colors over it later. The blue was the easiest part, with it just being an upper quarter square. This was about the time I started having flashbacks from elementary school and how damn hard it is to actually draw an American flag. My spacing is not great in the end, I'll admit, but damn it, I got the 13 stripes for our founding colonies on there, along with all the stars in the correct amounts per column. After staring at a picture of Old Glory for a few minutes, I noted that there was a white stripe that centered with the blue square, and a white stripe above and below that one. There was also a white stripe that was directly below the blue. That was the first full length stripe. There was still a lot of cleanup that needed to be done, but since I already had white on the brush, I decided to do what I dreaded the most in this project, the stars on the flag. I had no idea how I was going to space these. But surprisingly, this went quick. I started with the first and last columns, which have five stars apiece. I dotted these in at the top and bottom, and then I added a dot in the middle, and then between those, I added two more centered dots. Then I just needed four more columns of those spaced well enough. This spacing is what I feared would become a nightmare, but it wasn't as bad as I thought, as I just dotted a few across the top, guessing as best as I could at the spacing and then I removed the dots that I did not need. The spacing isn't perfect, but on a flag that's billowing in the wind, some discrepancy could be argued that it was the fabric offsetting it some. That or maybe it was a lazy part of my brain talking. Between these columns of stars, I begin adding additional columns. The new ones with only four stars apiece and offset from the others. I then clean up the stripes, and already this is looking fairly decent, and it's obvious what it's supposed to be. I had used dots because I had said to myself, there's no way I'm painting stars this tiny, I'm just not capable of... You know what, what the hell. Let's lace these Nikes up and just do it. My first half of stars did not come out too well, but then I figured if I did very, very tiny upside down V's through the dots, that helped. After all the V's were done, I then did one horizontal line across them, but a little higher up, so it was not quite an uppercase A. More like the anarchy symbol, but without the circle, and that horizontal line being much higher up. 
If I had done this from the start without using any dots, the stars would have probably come out even better. Satisfied with this and way out of time to get this out on the 4th, I finish the pole with the metallic silver and then add a little highlight of a brighter silver up both sides. I then attach it to the base and her outstretched hand. And this is the end result. I struggled with the miniature a lot more than I thought, though in large part it was due to the colors I chose at the start and the order I applied them in. If I had started with the mid-tone first and then added highlights and shadows over it like I normally do, I think I would have had an easier time and had a better and smoother result for the flesh. These acrylic gauches are very translucent. All of the free handing of stripes and stars was also way out of my comfort zone. However, these came out better than I thought they would in the end, and honestly, I needed to do this. I almost never paint freehand symbols or emblems, and this is definitely something I need to make myself do, and as often as I can, though only where it makes sense. For my personal positive takeaways, the blue clothing, specifically on her back shoulders and her right butt cheek, I think I did pretty good with the highlighting. Couple that with the stars on the front of her hot pants, and those would be what I consider my best work on this specific project. For my biggest personal negatives, the flesh could have definitely been better and smoother. I also had some bad cracking in spots from the speed paint. I'm assuming I didn't allow enough time for the previous paint to dry, or maybe I didn't allow enough time for the speed paint to dry. Regardless, it's definitely a problem. For lessons learned, I'll stick with starting with mid-tones first and then adding shadows and highlights after. And no more speed paints over gauche for me. And with that said, it's time to bring this video to its inevitable end. I hope you learned something or were inspired to pick up your own Master Box miniatures. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, you can support this channel by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures, I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.